We have talked a lot about the human impact of Hurricanes Katrina and Ida, but less about the storms themselves, the science behind them. What did it look like when either of them made landfall? How strong were they in comparison to other storms that we see? And we see a lot of storms more frequently than we did back in 2005. Let's get over to Peyton. He's got more on the science breakdown between those storms. Yeah, you know, Brandon, both of these storms obviously catastrophic mm -hmm. to our area, but both brought vastly different impacts to different parts of the area. The two storms storms were very, very strong. Ida maxing out at a cat four right off of our coast. Katrina at a cat five about a day before landfall. But you can see the similarities between the paths that zoomed out. When you zoom in, though, you really get that picture for Katrina in green here. That moving just to the mm. east of the city, whereas Ida moved west of the city and uh, bringing different outcomes to the Bayou River parishes, but also to the Mississippi coast. Uh, these two storms were different at landfall in a lot of ways. Katrina at landfall was a category three um, winds 120 to 125. Ida at landfall had winds closer to 150. Now these are sustained winds. We likely saw gusts that were much higher than this near that center or where the eye came offshore. So when we talk about the category, we're always just talking about the winds themselves. But what's interesting is Katrina's surge was double that of Hurricane Ida. That is because Katrina was a bigger hurricane days before and a much bigger, wider hurricane with hurricane force winds that extended over 75 miles away from the center. So Ida, it wasn't a tiny storm by any stretch, but the uh, the scope of the winds were much less, and that's why that surge was less for Hurricane Ida, even though the winds were stronger. So Brandon, when you're looking at different hurricanes here, we always like to make comparisons. We always like to make comparisons when we're trying to decide what to do when that next storm comes. And I always like to caution people, Please don't ever let a past hurricane determine that mm -hmm. you're going to stay for the right. next hurricane. They are all so vastly different. The category only tells you one thing, and that's the winds. It does not tell you how bad the surge is going to be. It doesn't tell you how bad the rainfall is going to be with the storm. So if we have any message, some takeaway from these terrible storms we've had, it's that when we do have the next one, and we know there will be a next one someday, that please take every storm differently and know that if you're told to evacuate, please try to evacuate. Yeah, Peyton, you know, we talk a lot about change since Katrina specifically. Has forecasting changed since that storm? Oh my gosh, the forecasting has changed so much even in five years. Something mm. we didn't have back then with our forecasts were these high resolution models and models have really greatly improved. These are models that can pick up on that rapid intensification that we haven't been able to do up until a couple of years ago. The track forecasts have greatly improved and that's why you've seen that cone shrink so much over the past several years. Brandon. All right, sound advice. We know that you stay on top of it, Peyton. Thank you for that breakdown.